it's very difficult to understand all of this, especially when we juxtapose it to the information that's given from the World Bank. Now, Mr. Thal Thalpur created this timeline in which he says that this uh, has been increasing, this well, income inequality has been increasing since the 1980s. The World Bank states that since the 1980s, we've been seeing a reduction in, in in extreme poverty. Now, when we put those two trends together, does it really matter if wealth concentration keeps on increasing? Yes, one of the things people have really misunderstood is how important relative income income is, not just your absolute standard of living, but how you compare with other people. Uh, the sense of, of anxiety, of failure, of being devalued, looked down on um, when your income is lower than others. Uh, the income differences are extremely important. Uh, and our research on the high income countries shows that the bigger the income gaps between rich and poor, uh, the worse the life expectancy, the more the violence, uh, the less well kids do at school, the lower levels of child well-being. A whole raft of, of health and social problems get worse if the income differences between members of the population are bigger. It's, it's really a very fundamental form of uh, um, social damage, if you like, uh, right. that holds countries backward. Right. Mr. Wilkinson, now you mention all uh, these factors, these disparities that continue to widen when there is a greater income inequality. I'd like to focus a little more and specifically on the healthcare sector. How does uh, income inequality impact and adversely impact the healthcare sector? Well, it's not simply that uh, the differences in people's health get bigger, it's the average health that gets worse, the average life expectancy, uh, the average levels of homicide um, or other measures of violence, uh, the average um, maths and literacy scores of school children. All these things get worse if a country has bigger income differences between rich and poor. Uh, 